Well, we can sure hope that we don't have any problems, and uh, but the reality of the situation with Ween is there will be some issues to be dealt with, and we should be proactive figuring out how to be prepared for them. Joining me is uh, Dr. Jerry Stucka, Extension Veterinarian, NDSU Extension Service, and you know, you're very knowledgeable about things that we might expect to see in these calves and in these lots when we wean them. Uh, what would you say we should be anticipating and how might we recognize it and have we got a strategy to, mm -hmm. to deal with it? Yeah. I think overall, John, we're really fortunate to be uh, in this state, in a cow-calf state primarily, in which we don't generally see great levels of sick cattle. We just don't. When we wean our calves at our own place, you know, we, uh, we maybe anticipate two to three percent of them we're going to treat. Sometimes we have a little bit less, but sometimes, uh, you know, for other circumstances, we're going to have a little bit more. So you're never quite sure. But the key, I think, that you're driving at is that even if we have one out of a hundred or one out of two hundred, we want to make sure we find that calf in the right in the right circumstances, in the right place, in the right time. Because early treatment, and especially with a bacterial infection, early treatment of the antibiotic is critical. So this is where the, your animal husbandry skills really come into this discussion. Uh, yeah, science part of this, absolutely, but animal husbandry is, is key here. We already know what sick calves really look like when they're really sick. I mean, we use the terms like depressed. Well, I'm not sure the calf is depressed or not, to be honest with you, but he's not feeling good. When he's not feeling good, what does he look like? Sometimes his ears start to droop, he goes off feed a little bit. And if you're, if you're a real astute uh, st a student of animal behavior, you'll notice things like his hair coat is not quite the same. You'll notice things like his eyes just are a little bit dull. Uh, you'll notice that he's not really in a position where he's interacting with his other pen mates. Really, really early signs that he's not feeling well. You don't always know the reason why. You can't always tell whether it's respiratory disease or he's just got a belly ache or he's got something else going on. But the very, very early signs of illness, in other words, anything that indicates it's, there's an abnormal behavior pattern to this calf is a clue that that calf needs to be looked at. Probably brought up to the treatment facility and at least uh, stick a thermometer in, let's see what his rectal temperature is. Where would we like to see that temperature before we get, or what, at what point are we saying we got some real issue to deal with? Yeah, there's actually a veterinary discussion about what's the cutoff point. And, and some of that depends on environmental temperature, it really does. I guess for me, I, I look at the normal temperature of, of an animal, of a calf. It's 101 and a half plus or minus a degree. So, and I even fudge a little bit beyond that. So when I get a calf that's 103 and a half, and I'm concerned that he doesn't look right, I think that's one that probably is going to need some treatment. Now I'm gonna make some different not assumptions, but I'm going to look at that calf in a little different way. Does he really have res early respiratory disease at that point? Or is there something else going on with this calf? Uh, or did I just uh, mess with him too much, bringing him up to the facility, and it's 80 degrees when I'm looking at this calf, and now he's hotter than he should be. So these are uh, animal husbandry skills. Yeah, we have a thermometer to tell us, but this is your skill as an animal husbandry person. I think most cow-calf operators don't use a lot of antibiotics, don't treat no. a lot of sick cattle, no. and so when it comes to having to deal with one, they might not have a lot in the uh, vet cabinet. Yeah. And uh, they probably haven't kept up on all the latest and newest products yeah. like a feedlot operator would who no. deals with this day to day. Yeah. Are there a couple products out there or some lines of antibiotic or uh, medications that you think they should be aware of yeah. and help us know what's happening in that industry, pharmaceutical industry. So let me back up a little bit. One of the things I don't think cow-calf operators need is a whole big inventory of antibiotics. They just don't. They don't treat very many. Uh, even big herds, you just don't treat that many. You can have some on hand for, there may be an emergency situation where I need to treat a foot rot or something like that. So don't maintain a big inventory of a bunch of different antibiotics because it it's expensive for one thing and they can go out of date, number two. 
One of the things, and I'll, I'll just put this in here right now, that you really need is a VCPR, a veterinary client-patient relationship with your veterinarian. That means that you know who your veterinarian is. You know his name. Uh, you work with him. He, he deals with your animals. He knows your operation. And you trust him for recommendations. He can give you advice as to, if I'm going to treat any calves this fall that, that need an antibiotic, because I'm pretty sure they've got BRD, bovine respiratory disease, which one should I use? We are really fortunate in the last 10 to 15 years, probably 10 years, 10, 12 years, that we've had a pretty dramatic switch in our antibiotic usage. It used to be years ago that we would give an antibiotic day one, day two, day three, and maybe beyond. We had to treat them every day. And that was okay to keep the blood levels up of the antibiotic, but actually the animals kind of got tired of it after a while, to be honest with you, and they got a little sore. Today we've got low volume. That means I can treat a five weight calf with some of these products with a dose of somewhere around seven and a half cc's. Others, it may be around that 5.5 cc's, a five weight animal with that low of a volume and know that I've got antibiotic on board for at least seven days, it may even be longer. That's not only good uh, for me, because I don't have to bring them in every day, but that's good for the animal, because now I'm confident I've got therapeutic levels of that antibiotic in that animal for enough days so that I can get rid of those bacteria. Antibiotics don't cure the animal, they get rid of the offending organism. So, it's really a lot better than it has been. And, and we've got a whole, not a plethora, but certainly a toolbox of different antibiotics we can choose. And your veterinarian may, may tell you to use Draxin, may tell you to use Zactran, may tell you to use Zeprevo, it may tell you to use Exceed. Even Micotil and, and uh, Batril have long-acting dosages that can be used. So rely on your veterinarian, have that relationship with them that you can call a veterinary client-patient relationship. You know, we've kind of stressed or focused a little bit on the cow-calf operator weaning his own calves. Yep. In most cases, he can do some things to manage yep. stress. Yep. We can anticipate not so many problems. Yep. But some of our backgrounders go and buy calves to market feed through, and they use the sale barn and whatever mechanism they can acquire calves. And some of these calves come in pretty stressed. You know, some transportation issues, unknown background, unknown vaccinations. Yep. Are those what situations would we consider maybe more of a general mass antibiotic treatment yeah. on arrival to get us through them tough time? Yeah. So now we've changed the stress level dramatically. Uh, Dr. Dolan mentioned this earlier. Once, and I use the term piling on, John. When we start piling on the stressors, weaning is one thing. Most calves can handle it without too much problem. When I start piling on transportation, brand new diets, commingling, that's huge, when I put different groups of calves together, now I've raised the uh, stress level by 10x or more. So now I need to be more aware of everything that I'm doing. Um, I have to be aware that I'm, those calves may get sick very quickly after I bring them to my place. They may be sick within the first week, whereas normally a weaned calf is going to take you a little bit longer. I got to be aware that it's not just going to be one or two that might get sick out of 100. Now we're talking about five or 10 or even maybe up to 20 of those calves might get sick. So what can I do? As an animal husbandry person, I gotta think about their comfort. I gotta make sure that, Carl mentioned this too, that they know where the water is. That this feed that I'm gonna give them is the most palatable, not to me as a human being, but to them as a calf. So I have no reluctance to come to the bunk. And there may be some tricks I have to use. I may have to feed some hay on the ground just to get them used to, to me. And, and I may have to put myself in that pen so they know who I am. So that when I'm coming in the pen to try and find sick animals, they're not, they're not uh, scared of me to the point where they want to hide their behavior. I want them to get used to me. I want them to know who I am, that I'm their caretaker. It's a big deal. And so when I get in those situations, I want to know some vaccination history on some of those calves too, because now I got to make a decision. What do I really need to give that calf to promote health? There's some things that don't really help me with health. And, and the health we're talking about is respiratory disease. Does that calf actually need a black leg vaccine? Probably not. Does they actually need an implant when, I, when he comes to my place? Probably not, because I want to get him 
eating, I want to get him healthy before I put an implant in that calf so he can make use of it. So I'm, I'm going to think about only the things that promote good health in that calf. It might be an intranasal vaccine. It might be a five-way vaccine. I'm going to keep it very short and simple. If I have a vaccination history that I can trust and that calf has been pretty well immunized, I might choose to leave them alone entirely with vaccines and concentrate on nutrition. The key question you asked me, John, was regarding antimicrobial use. And this is, this is really a conversation with your veterinarian. Is this the first time you're ever doing this or have you done it before and you got some history with these calves? Do I need to manage their health with an antimicrobial? It could be. If, if, I'm, if this isn't just local sale barn calves and now I'm getting calves out of Missouri and they're highly commingled, I may need to give an antimicrobial, an injectable antibiotic to every calf that comes because the level of stress in these calves is more than I can manage even with my tender loving care. Feed grade antibiotics can fit in this too, but you gotta remember in order for feed grade antibiotics to work, calves have to be eating. And that's why early on in high stress calves, I'm not a big fan of it because they just don't eat enough to, to make a difference. In my understanding, some of the uh, ways we used to use or go acquire, put feed grade antibiotics in our bunks when we had stress periods or some you know, illness showing up in the pen are changing. Yeah. What's the uh, veterinary directive uh, rules that are gonna impact how we, how we do that? Uh, good question, John. I wish we had a lot of time to talk about well, this. Well, maybe we can just hit the yeah. highlight here today. So the veterinary, the VFD is the acronym for veterinary feed directive. When we hit 2016, December 2016, January 2017, every antibiotic that goes, that can be used in feed for livestock for either treatment, prevention, or control needs to have a veterinary permission slip, if you will. And that permission slip is something that we call a veterinary feed directive. And I can only use antibiotics in the feed uh, according to the label. So in other words, I can put CTC, which is oreomycin or the, a generic, in the feed to treat um, respiratory disease at one gram per hundred pounds for five days. I can't put CTC in my feed to treat a foot rot outbreak. That's extra label drug use, which is illegal with feed additive antibiotics. But the important thing to remember here is that if I'm going to use it, when we hit that deadline, 20, December 2016, January 2017, that I'm gonna need a permission slip from my, my veterinarian to use those drugs according to the label. And I, as a veterinarian, will now be accountable for their use, as well as the producer, as well as the distributor. So it's a little bit more accountability in the, in the system, I think we can do it, and I think we'll do the right things up here. Well, I want to thank you, Dr. Stucker, for uh, covering these health aspects. I think, uh, you know, you, you brought a few things really to the front, and one is uh, we can be prepared with having some products and some, uh, on hand, but our biggest preparation is to get to know our veterinary, have a relationship, so when we need some advice, we can move ahead. So yeah. in closing, any final thoughts? Yeah, you know, John, I, I think sometimes and I'm a veterinarian, so I'm biased. I'm not sure we've asked our veterinarians the right questions. Doc, what do I need? What did I use last year? What, and he might ask you a question, well, well how did you get along last year? Because he won't remember every herd that he consults with. Ask him what you need, or say, Doc, what do I need to use? This is what my history has been. What do I need to use for vaccines? How do I use them? If I need to have an antibiotic on board for some sick calves, which ones do you think I should use and how should I use them? That's a really important thing. Well, thank you very much. You're welcome.